I'm on a quest to find the perfect reading challenge for 2024. We're starting early, but I'm exploring different book clubs or book prizes that I think might be good for the challenge as recommendations. The first one we're going to be trying is the Reese Witherspoon Book Club. I'm going to review all the books that I have read from the Reese Witherspoon Book Club and maybe mention a couple of the ones that I'm hoping to read and we're going to decide if I'm overwhelmingly agreeing, loving the books, or if I should just try to find something else. So, so far I'm going to be doing this one. I'm also planning on doing the ones with uh, like the Nibla Nebula Award or the Yugo Award. If there are any other ones you would like me to do a video of, please let me know in the comment section. So by the end of this series, I want to choose one, maybe two, and do my own version trying to read some of the nominees or winners, depending if it's a book club or a prize. So hopefully that made sense. So the Reese with a Spoon book club started about six years ago, and there are 67 books that are out as monthly picks, and I have read about 14. <laughs> I say about because there are a couple that I wasn't able to finish. I'm gonna admit that I was a little bit of a hater because I kept seeing the recommendations and I feel like every time I would pick a book purposely because I saw it from the book club, I ended up not enjoying it. But while looking at them quickly before the video, I realized that's not actually true. Some of the ones that I just randomly picked up that were also in the book club, I love. So. Let's see by the end of the video if I should get more recommendations from that list or not. So I'm going to go from the most recent date to the oldest one. Uh, I'm only going to talk about the ones that I have read just to go quickly. I might mention a couple of the ones that I'm hoping to read, just 14 reviews. <laughs> so the first one that I'm seeing is Yellow Face by RF Kwan. This was the uh, pick for the month of July of this year. I'm currently listening to the audiobook. Let me check how far I am into it. 69. <laughs> I'm not joking, 69% into it. I have two and a half hours-ish left. I'm enjoying it so far, so I can't really talk about it. Uh, maybe by the time I'm editing this video, I'll be further, uh, but I'm overall enjoying it so far, so not a bad review is going to happen. The Nightingale is the March of this year. I thought they were reviewing mostly recent picks, so that's interesting. I have yet to read that one. I, I need to do a challenge one day trying to read some of my historical fiction. <laughs> January of again this year is The House in the Pines. This is part of my pile of shame. I started the audiobook and just never finished it, so that doesn't really count as a review, but it's part of my 14-ish. That's what I meant by 14-ish. <laughs> okay, finally. Uh, so for the month of August of last year, there was Wrong Place, Wrong Time. And this is where I feel like my opinion of this book club changed because this one I purposely picked it because I was seeing it on the book club recommendations and I ended up really enjoying it. It's actually, where is it? It's right here. This is a shelf with a lot of like favorites, mystery, thriller, horror. So I ended up loving this a bit to my surprise, but I really was intrigued by the promise. It's really up my alley. It's uh, following this main character, this female character. She has a uh, husband and a younger son. She sees him murdering someone, which is really out of pocket because he's a good kid. Uh, I think it's the night that he turns 18. Anyway, uh, and then there's a time loop, which big fan, that's why I picked it up basically. And she keeps going back in time, trying to figure out what's going on, uh, but also how they managed to get to that point where her good kid would murder someone. And I really, really liked it. Uh, there was a few, like, there were a few mom jokes that I like to call. And I wasn't even angry at the ending. I feel like these kind of time loop books are so hard to end. But I was happy with the ending and I read this super quickly. I had so much fun in that vlog. That's all I can remember. So I highly recommend this. Love this. So that's, I think, going to be probably my favorite book in that list. I've just quickly looked at the list. So I'm, like, reacting live. But yes, I absolutely love this. Can't recommend this enough. Especially right now, it's the fall. Pick it up. I do have seven days in June on my TBR. I actually bought that book because I saw it from the club. I, had, I didn't pick it up because just prior to that, uh, May 21, 2021, I read The Last Thing He Told Me. This is where I felt like I was burnt. <laughs> I hated this. Uh, I could not believe that it won the Goodreads Choice Award of 2021. It sucked. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I hated it. Uh, you're following this woman. Her husband disappears and leaves like a note behind to take care of his daughter, her stepdaughter. And I... <laughs> 
She obviously tries to figure out what happened, where he is, and I hated the way that she pieced things, to, pieced things together because it was so random. Like, she decided, oh, let's go there. Why? Why? Uh, the ending was, I'm gonna give it that. I felt like it got more unique towards the end, but not necessarily in a good way. I resented that book so much. I got rid of it, even though I love the cover, so that tells you everything you need to know. But yes, I also resented that it won, which sounds so like snobby, but like, I really was annoyed. And this is where I thought I had given up on the book club completely until wrong place, wrong time. So yeah, I remember this was where I was like, yeah, I'm never trusting the book club again. It was popular, so it might just be a me thing, but we actually read this with the uh, the book club on Patreon, and a lot of us didn't care for it. But yeah, it was popular, so it is what it is. Right prior to this, I'm seeing uh, for spring 2021. I didn't know. I thought it was a monthly thing. Um, they chose this as a YA pick. Firekeeper's Daughter. I ended up liking this. I didn't read this because of the book club. I picked it up just because I kept seeing it, and I love the cover. I'm gonna be honest. I listened to this as an audiobook, and it was a great audiobook. I don't read a ton of YA books, but this was great. For some reason, I don't remember well my contemporaries. I don't know why. You follow my female character. Uh, she's a young native character, and there's like an intrigue in the community, and I don't think there's that much I can say because contemporaries, I feel like anything is too revealing, but I did enjoy this, which is what matters here. So I did enjoy this one. It was really popular. And I understand the hype. I didn't remember it being part of the club. I haven't read this, but I'm gonna make fun of myself because the Senatorium, the reviews are not good when I look on Goodreads, but the cover, I actually like it. And I've mentioned so many times how much I hate the cover of The Last, which is super similar, but for some reason, the vibes are so different, but I just needed to mention that. Okay, this is another one I felt very, mm -mm. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Hated this. I tried to read this seven times. I'm not joking, seven times, because it was the winner on the Goodreads Choice Award of 2020, because it was the pick for July and June. I couldn't get into it. I tried it literally seven times. I put it down. I was listening to it as an audiobook. I don't know if that didn't help, but I kept putting it down and be like, I'm so done. I cannot get into it. And then I was like, oh, it is the winner, though, for the mystery thriller section, so I need to try it seven times. I cannot express how much I can't stand this book. I'm not planning on picking up anything else by the author because I hated this so much. And I believe in her other book. Is it The Apartment in Paris or something? I saw it going around a lot, but yeah, I'm never reading anything else by her. And I remember it being part of the Reese with Spoon book club. So that's why I also didn't trust the book club. It could be just that I picked a couple of the really bad ones or the ones that were not going to work for me so that's two really bad ones but we don't do have one that i really liked so the next one that i'm seeing is the january 2020 pick and it was such a fun age that's another contemporary that's really not my usual cup of tea but i did enjoy this one you're following uh this black woman who is accused of like kidnapping a kid and it's essentially, the book is essentially used to discuss uh, privilege, racism. And I did overall enjoy it. Uh, not my usual cup of tea, like I was saying, but I did like this one. So would trust the book club for that one. Oh, this one I didn't know it was part of the book club. I did overall like it. Uh, this is The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda, which I do have right here. I like Megan Miranda. I feel like for me, she's a like 3.5 star author, which doesn't sound really good, but I feel like she writes really good murder mysteries, like in small towns or like sometimes it's part of like one neighborhood. And she does give me like cozy vibes, murder mystery and cozy. I know not everyone agrees with that, but I like her work in general. It's like just a safe bet for me. This specific one has like raindrops, 3D ones, which love it. But yes, this was good. Not my favorite by her, but this was good. She tends to play with timelines, so like two, three years, I think, this one, you go back in time. Uh, there's murder in a small beach town. This is what you need to know. And yeah, that's a safe bet. I think I gave that one 3.5 stars, so not a bad book to see on that list. I did read the March 2019 book pick, and it is uh, Daisy Jones and the Sex. Okay, this one is a very popular one. I can see why this would be a pick to pick a book to pick for a book club. This was not far after I had read uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by the same author, which that one I loved. This one I highly recommend listening to as an audiobook. This is what I did because everyone told me to do that. 
I did like it much more as an audiobook than I would have as a physical book, but I think I preferred a TV show, which I watched recently. This was okay. A lot of it is told uh, interview style, which made it very readable, but I felt like it felt like a skeleton of a story. Like, it didn't feel like there was enough story. I do feel like, again, the TV show kind of fixed that for me, but I get why it's popular, but for me it was a little bit disappointing because I hoped it would be as good as The Seventh Husband of Evelyn Hugo. Do we know if the movie is going to come out soon? Because I'm really intrigued for that, but yeah, this was okay. Not bad, not amazing. One that I couldn't finish, uh, Where Are the Crawdads? Sing. That was the pick for September of 2018. I believe the author came, like, there, there's been some controversy behind her. I'm not gonna lie, it makes me feel super snobbish <laughs> to say that out loud, but I really like when I can't stand a book. I couldn't make it far into the audiobook at an hour or two and I put it down. I love when that happens and then it comes out that the author, there's a problem because it makes me feel justified in not being able to, <laughs> to like it as much as everyone else. Again, it feels very petty, but it makes me feel justified in my hate. So yeah, that one doesn't really count because I didn't read it, but I guess that's a like negative for me because I couldn't finish it, right? So we can see a pattern here. There are definitely a couple books that I just really, really did not like. October of 2017 picked The Rules of Magic by Alice Offman. I tried to read so many of her other books uh, after really enjoying Practical Magic, the movie. I did read the book. I don't feel like it aged really well, and I do prefer the vibes of the movie. It gives you really cozy vibes. Like, I'm trying currently to find any other books that could give me similar vibes because I love witches, but I feel like the ones in, like, modern times, it can be a uh, hit or miss for me. But this one, this is the prequel. I did finish it, but I really, none of it stuck. It was fine, no hard feelings, but I will just never talk about this book ever again. It was meh. So not necessarily a plus for me, but that's not really the book club's fault, I guess. The pick, the month prior to that, September of 2017, we have Little Fires Everywhere. I read this a while ago now, so I don't remember 100% what happens. It is another contemporary. See, we're seeing a pattern for my own brain, but it's sort of a mystery contemporary. I remember liking this. I know there's a TV show, I believe. I haven't watched it. I'm not planning to because, again, it's not my usual cup of tea, but I remember liking this. So that's that's a good, that's a plus. Oh, it has The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I have not read that, but I do have it on my shelf, so maybe I could read that if I do that as a challenge. Ooh, another bad one. Um, June of 2017. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This was part of my pile of shame for years. I tried to read it, I think in 2017, and didn't finish it, and I eventually got back to it, and I finished it as an audiobook. Eh, didn't really care for it. Oh, and this is the first first one, so it has been a little over six years for that book club. So you can see why I wasn't really associating that book club with like amazing picks. I don't know though, if it's because I've been reading, you know, the worst ones. <laughs> but more recently, I have been enjoying the picks I have read. Again, Wrong Place, Wrong Time is definitely my favorite one of the whole thing, I think. And this is why I wasn't sure if this is something I wanted to explore more. I'm thinking about it. This is why we're starting with this one. Personally, I think that the Nebula or the Yugo Awards might be better picks for me. But the ones that I'm currently thinking about reading, again, we just mentioned uh, The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I've been seeing uh, Fair Play quite a bit. Isn't that a nonfiction for relationships? Which I'm single, so I don't really want to read that. But I've heard great things about that one, if that's something you're looking into. And like I mentioned, uh, Seven Days in June. I believe this is like a contemporary romance, which I really wanted to pick that one. I've also seen the Paper Palace cover going around. I'm realizing that the marketing behind that book club is good because quite a few of those covers I've seen and I've heard nothing about it but Tom Lake, that cover is stunning. I don't do like cover buys that much but I would pick that up just because of that cover. It's gorgeous. So what's your personal experience with the Reese Witherspoon book club? Have you enjoyed the books? Do you tend to participate? Are you just like oh randomly I've picked up a couple? Did it go well? Not well? I'm leaning towards personally like the not well 
line. I don't think this would be the best book club for me, but I would love to hear the best books you have read personally from that list because I might pick up a couple more, I might change my mind, but I don't think this is the best book club for me personally. I tend to read more uh, fantasy sci-fi, that's why I was mentioning the other ones. A few people also mentioned that I should try do this with uh, other prizes like the Booker's price. I can put some on the screen, but I would love to hear your recommendations so I can look at the list. And then by the end of the year, I want to make a decision and see which ones are the best for me. So 14-ish, not that many that I've enjoyed out of 67. So I don't think this is the best one for me, like I said. So would love to hear your recommendations in the comment section. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be continuing this. The next one, like I said, will probably be one of the SFF awards and I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in a coming video very soon. Bye!